So like today I came in and one of my firefighters was like, Chief, uh, I hate to tell you this, but we want to hit the camera. So I'm like, we want to hit the camera, you know, like, but I got plans in place and we're doing the fire matrix, so you will be able to get an increase, but we can't compete with the pay that they're paying these guys. So I'm walking in the door at 45000 a year, and that's something that, you know, that's something we'll have to work towards for our guys and fill in these positions. But I did feel like uh, implementing the fire matrix would level the playing field for us to retain our well-trained firefighters. I wanted to make sure that we, our staff had the needed equipment they needed to do their job. It's just like a carpenter. You can't go out here with a saw and run a build a house with just a hand saw. You need specialized tools so that you can get the job done quicker and efficiently and still be able to perform your duties. So at that point, we, um, our board, we've put in place a program to replace outdated equipment and we just ordered um, our 2020 Pierce Pumper. So it will replace our 2001 Freightliner, which is now out of uh, service. It's inoperable at this time. And hopefully our new uh, pumper will be here within the next four to six weeks. It wasn't a spec truck, so it didn't take a year for us to get it. It was a truck that was in line, and it's a 2020, so it's fairly new. Most of our trucks, they have anywhere from 15 to 20 years on it, and we need to put something in place to replace these vehicles so to keep us moving forward in the future. We have a new business that's coming to town. I'm sure you all are aware of. We have Longhorns, you got Popeyes, you got uh, Holiday Inn that's coming, you have the new Verizon store that's coming, and also you also have, um, I think they're working on the downtown entertainment district. So that's a lot of things that's going on in Thompson that's going to bring a lot of people in Thompson. So we've got to revamp so that we can meet, meet the needs of the community. And in the future, I would like to add an in-house fire marshal position to our staffing. That is a position that was there before, but the previous chief, when he was appointed to the uh, fire chief's position, he, um, they deleted that position. So the new fire, uh, fire marshal position, we will go in and do our inspections, and we'll make sure all our businesses are up to code and follow the life safety code. And this also helps the people in the community. So they won't go in, because there's several businesses we went in. You, you can fall through the floor and several of them around the square. So we want to make sure that we take care of those and make sure those are taken care of. I'm also training our personnel for when I get ready to retire from town. It's in a couple of years. <laughs> Not many, but I'm looking forward to retirement. So to get them in place and get them trained so hopefully they can steal hire from within inside and appoint a fire chief from inside. And being a fire chief, not just for the title, but having your heart that you want to share uh, this information with your community. You want to be there and give it all you got while you're there. And so that's what we're looking for. And, you know, some people you can give them um, position and they lose their mind. But then you have those that really care and genuinely they care about the people who are within the position and that's the kind of fire chief I want to be. And I try to show the guys every day that that's what it's all about. And let them get involved in what's going on so they can take ownership of what's going on and then that makes them a better firefighter and makes them care about what we have going on in the city. And just going back over a couple of our accomplishments since I've been the fire chief since 2016, we've got our class our ISO class rating down to a class three. We have a new ladder truck. We have a new pumper coming soon. We have a new station, which is being built. And like I said before, this is the first time that the city has constructed a new building since 1966. I have two female firefighters on duty. I have an administrative secretary. I've increased the training. And in 2022, I will have one of my officers receive his fire science degree. And that's the first time we've had that in uh, the fire department since I've been there. And I've been there for 36 years now. And I hope you guys, when we do get in our station, y'all come out and visit us. And um, 
we can show you around and just hang out a little bit. And um, if any of you guys have any questions, open up for questions. But again, I want to say thank you for inviting me. I've enjoyed and I enjoy coming out and speaking with you guys to let you know what we have going on in the body. What percentage of your calls uh, lack of medical emergency versus fire calls? Fire service has completely changed. It used to be 80% was fire and 20% medical. Now we've got probably 80% medical. Um, you'll see us all the time when assisting with this. And you're aware of the delay and the so many times you were there before then. We were there and we sat on calls anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Because we can't transport. We won't let you transport. No, sir. But we can get them the best service and within our training. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, we've had one um, incident that came in. There was a call for an ambulance. They just need to get downstairs. The patient had COVID. They couldn't get the mother downstairs, but um, they called the animal service at any time. That's something that your insurance is not going to pay for. She called the fire department. The guys got stood up, went over, went upstairs. We didn't have a stair chair, but we brought her down in the kitchen chair, got in the car, down with her to the doctor. She made a pass, I think her eyes both of them, or two seconds down, but um, the family came back by and they brought us to the show how much it appreciates you for taking her for us here. And that's what it's all about. It's just caring for our neighbors and caring for each other. Is these stations going to have the uh, vacuum system where you can hook up and run the trucks inside the building yes, sir. one at a time? Yes, sir. We'll have, we'll have, it's called an air hall. It's the one that's in the ceiling. Yeah. We're not using the ones that hook up to the um, exhaust. Because um, as I did my research, I went to different departments. And they have drugged those out of the station when they went out. Because they get, they're magnetic and they're supposed to disconnect. They don't disconnect, so the whole hole is going down the street. So that's what it happens. So we ended up with an air hall that's uh, in the city. And it'll give you a reading how they get uh, the carbon monoxide when it gets so low or so high, it'll, it'll come home and then I'll give us a it's a state of the art uh, building. Um, we yeah. have a workout area there. Um, we have a patio in the back. Um, we have 12 headrooms. Um, we have a conference room and a train room. Um, what I did is <coughs> in the design of it, when you go in our station now, you go right in and everybody's sitting in the kitchen. If you sit in the kitchen, what you want to do? Eat all that. And then people bring cakes in. <laughs> so we moved, we separated and moved the kitchen to the back of the station, put our train room on the front. So, and the day room for the guys to sit in the back of the kitchen. But you're not sitting there with your food. But that's what we are right now. What's the big hole for? <laughs> the uh, action <laughs> on the uh, soil uh, was off. So they had to go back and dig back. dig back out, put the gravels in, and then they got to wait now because it's raining so much, and they drained it out. Like you said, it was. <laughs> we can <laughs> not walk in there. So. But um, that, that's what's happening right there. And so they got the gravels and everything ready for them again so they can uh, kind of break the farm. Chief Harris, I have a personal question. What would be your advice to young ladies who want to become fire? That they can do. They can do it just as well as anybody. I say that to any female wanting to any male that they can do. Learn the skill. Our weakness is our upper body strength. Get your upper body strength in and you can do it just as well. Never say you can't do it. That's the same thing I told my daughter. Uh, she was working at Big Chick, and she decided Big Chick is not what I want, but I want to marry Big Chick. So I said, guess what you got to do? You got to go to school. So she ended up with a scholarship to nursing, ended up at Howard University, got a doctor's class. That's what we 
will. It's, it's what they want to do, if that's what they want to do. But I, I think our younger people, they just need some guidance. They have the talents. They've got all the tools they need. But they just need somebody to spend some time with them, show them different avenues. Because everybody doesn't have to go to college. The diploma is electrician, um, building, and all of that. I was even interested in building. But, uh, and I had some guys at the fire station that used to build. So, I'm, I'm kind of time to watch, so, you know, I follow them around and everything. They were like, we're not going to be involved with you today. Uh, <laughs> so, you can go home. But, uh, John Riggins, uh, Jean Butts, which y'all probably knew, and um, Ray Lewis, I would go out there and they would build projects and stuff, and I would watch them. So when I built my house, they showed me how to drive, uh, drive a tractor, and I uh, cleared off the land. And so I thought that was awesome. That's what you want. But we're excited about going to that new station. We're excited about the future of Thomaston. Uh, the next five years, I think, is going to be it's going to be good. <laughs> but I, I really think. The shift's 24 hours? Yes, we work 24 hours a day. And three shifts or four? I mean, sh different shifts. Like it's three shifts. Four. Mm -hmm. And the most they work a month is uh, 10 days a month. And I worked that for like, what, 31 years? <laughs> and then to go back from 8 to 8 to 4, I get up in the morning when I first saw it, I drag my life. Good but uh, I, I love the 24 and all 48. You get a lot of fun. How many volunteers you got? And you said you have a I've only got two, but I'm still trying to get them. It's hard to get volunteers because now the state is requiring them to have the same training that we have. And we try to do it in house and get them there every Tuesday night. And they work and they're busy and everything. So, um, Do it. 
everybody on the spot. If we want to, otherwise we can say the third three. And we don't think that's really abusive. I think everybody's expecting it to be a whole lot more. And everybody's expecting us to make a lot less money because they assume that we're having to pay a whole lot more like everybody is. And the other lines clubs around that are doing this, and we got about 20 at least. 